It's all about sharing conversations or someone's going to write it for you. Arrow.net. A-R-R-O-E.net. All right, let's do it. Let's play it forward. These are real people, real stories, the struggle to play it forward. Episode number 513 is with Orlando Mendez from NBC's The Voice. Hey, Arrow, how you doing? Absolutely. You're doing great. Thank you so much. Oh, my God, dude. The, I, I know it's early in the morning, but the thing is, is that we get the opportunity to talk to those that are shaping the future of music, those that are going to be a part of the radio, as well as Instagram and music videos and stuff like that. You do realize the power you have right now, right? Oh, man, it's it's I don't think it's hit me yet fully, uh, but I'm just trying to soak it all in and enjoy uh, enjoy this opportunity. You know, at 26 years old to be seen on national TV, this right here is like winning the Powerball lottery. Do you feel like that or is it one of those where you just say, OK, I'm going to breathe. I'm going to take it one step at a time. We're going to grow into this moment. No, I feel like that. You know, I feel completely and utterly blessed. I mean, I feel like I've been given, like you said, an incredible opportunity. And I just want to soak it in and I want to take advantage of it. And I want to, you know, be able to use it to uh, to advance this uh, this beautiful thing, you know, this beautiful career that, that I'm hopefully on. Living in Miami and you and I talking at 8 o'clock in the morning. Boy, my God. You mean this is what it's all about? Oh, come on. Can we not have interviews at 1 o'clock in the afternoon? <laughs> <laughs> not a huge morning guy, but you know what? I feel great this morning. And I'm, I'm happy to be on here with you, Aaron. <laughs> one, one of the things that really inspires me about you is that, you know, Gene Simmons of KISS says, if you do not believe it's the greatest thing on the planet, nobody else will believe it. The fact that you came into this game calling yourself the Cuban Cowboy... Orlando, Orlando, I'm seeing big things for you, dude. You are marketable. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. I just wanted to come in and be authentic, man, and be who I am and, um, you know, hope hope that the nation at large would, would embrace that. See, that's what I love about you is the fact that you are authentic. And, and you, know, you know how it is when it comes to creativity. We like to hide behind it so often that it's like, okay, I'm going to let that speak for me, but that we never get to see the artist and stuff. But, but you're not afraid to say, well, I am an artist and I'm on a journey and, and I, I may not be perfect, but I'll share with you a song. Right. I mean, that's what I'm in this for, to be honest with you. I mean, I love music is my passion, but I also want to, I also want to touch people through that music. I also want to uh, connect with people. That's my biggest goal in life is just to connect with as many people as I can, man. And so, you know, coming in and being vulnerable and being yourself and letting people see who I truly am, um, that, that was my main goal. And I'm glad, I'm glad it's kind of, you know, it's coming to fruition. Being down there in the Miami area, John Cicada and, and Gloria Estefan uh, from my, from the Miami Sound Machine, they have always embraced the music of, of the future. Have they reached out to you or do you do you expect them to reach out to you since you since you are making that that scene? And it would be incredible to hear from Gloria, from Gloria Estefan. Um, you know, I hope our paths cross, you know, I hope we cross paths soon. Um but I actually heard from from a from a friend of mine the other day that his dad knows John Sakata and John Sakata wants to sing a song with me. Oh my god! How crazy God. is that? I, no, I I totally get. No, I've been with John. I I totally get it. John, yeah, I he, you know the way that he, I'm telling you these these two have embraced the scene of the Miami area and and to watch them really bring people forward. I I'm not shocked that, that I, I guarantee you're gonna you're gonna meet up with both of them. I mean, that would be a dream come true. I, I grew up listening to uh, Miami Sound Machine, and my parents have played it a bunch, so that would be incredible. Wow. And to sit down with them, oh, my God, what they bring is the, the past forward in, into a place where, where people like yourself, Orlando, uh, can, can understand that th- this isn't just about the now. This is about how we're bringing music forward and, and, and really uh, affecting the next generations. Absolutely. That's... Uh... It's special what they've done and what they continue to do, you know. So your your band is still inside its infant stages, learning to collaborate with others, especially since you know you're, you're on that stage on NBC's The Voice all by yourself. But but when you when you're with that band, you've got to work with other people. Yeah, and that's been you know it's a learning process. We continue to grow every day. We have honestly we've been blessed we haven't had that many disputes you know but we continue to grow every day we continue to learn how to uh, deal with each other and navigate the different personalities and i've kind of tried to take a leadership role there and um, getting the guys to understand this is a team effort you know no one guy can think um 
that they're better or bigger or uh, you know more important than any other and that's what makes it work you know and so we're learning and growing every day uh, but I'm blessed with a great group oh my god and, and, and the one one of the things that I've learned about being because I, I I was part of a garage band I loved being part of a garage mm-hmm. band because you're right everybody comes with an idea I love the birth of a song where you, you may come in there with the song hook but then the bass guitarist brings in the rhythm and all of a sudden the drummer says well let's tap into that I mean I, I love that collaboration where everybody has to work together yeah, that was that's honestly one of my favorite parts. We were we were actually in the studio um, a couple of weeks ago, and you know a lot of the stuff we came in there, it ended up changing and growing and, and evolving because of what you said. You know, different ideas. Uh, you get an idea from the bass, from the basses, from the drummer, and you see a song kind of all come together, and that's a that's a beautiful thing, I think. When you say that you're in the studio, one of the I think one of the toughest things that I've had in recording music in the studio is the fact that you become the perfectionist because of the punch edit. Because because they're, they're saying, okay, well let, let's redo this section of the song over again. To me, I mean, it's, it's and and then you've got to take it out to a live stage, but you don't have punch edit when you're out there at the live stage. That's right. That's right. No, it's it, you can get caught up in that for sure. We try to make our songs sound as you know as live as we can that we can recreate this on stage you know that we go take this to a crowd of 100 or 1000 and it sounds the same as the record um but yeah you can get caught up in perfectionism and you know punching in here and there adding 100 different elements but then you lose kind of that yep. live quality about it you know yeah, yeah, because I mean that's one of the things, and, and I'm blessed with the opportunity to talk to every every musician that that's that's you know getting back out on the road again, and that's the one thing that they missed during the lockdown was that live feeling. One one day, I'd love to post all the interviews that I had with those artists that were locked up. What about you? When you were locked up in 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 the the COVID lockdown, wh- what did you do? You you were in a place, but you couldn't express. Yeah, it was tough. That was. That was probably a really, you know, one of the toughest parts of my life for me. But I kind of tried to turn around. I learned how to play guitar, which I didn't know how to do before. I kind of taught myself how to play guitar. I was writing a whole bunch, wrote a bunch of songs, and kind of tried to use it. You know, did you did you record at home? Because I mean, that's I, I think it's cool that artists can do yeah. that nowadays because of technology. Yeah, definitely recorded at home. I was recording with other musicians, um, uh, recording parts and Zoom things. Zoom jams and, <laughs> and whatnot. <laughs> to be with Camila Cabela, first of all, it's a pop star. And d- d- does it kind of just bump into what you're doing? Or is it one of those where you're going, I'm going to learn what you're doing on that pop scene because I'm going to make what I do a little poppy, but I'm going to stay true to my roots. Yeah. You know, I think something that I've been able to learn from her is um, just how to be, just how to tap into what people are are, are, are yearning for right what people want to hear she's kind of tapped into this uh pop meets latin music kind of fusion that just works i mean she's become one of the biggest pop stars in the world so just learning from her how to you know how to kind of feel out the landscape of music and filling a a a need or a void uh, that's there kind of using it one of the things i'm very proud of you about is the fact that you are not afraid to use that falsetto voice i mean there are so many people that that don't want to go into that higher range my god in heaven you have got a voice dude thank you brother i appreciate that i mean you know what and i was like that until recently um i didn't go into my falsetto much i was nervous about the way it sounded yep. or that you know i had this real strong chest voice but then i go into this falsetto and it's real light and kind of airy and then you know who really made me embrace that was Camila, really? but also Charlie Puth. Charlie Puth, of course. Uh, Charlie Puth. Dude, yeah. dude, dude, I just he heard it. Came an, on and, I, I just heard an interview with him on Howard Stern. Do you realize that he wants to quit music and go back to teaching? No way. That's what he said. And I sat there and I, I about drove off the dang road when he said that. He's, he says, I love teaching people so much that I really want to go back into teaching. That's crazy. I quit music altogether. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, that's what I said, too. You can't quit music. You can't do it. You can't quit music. He's so good. He's so good at what he does, and the world needs his music, man. But uh, he's he's an incredible teacher. I didn't, you know, I've just, from what I've seen of Charlie Puth, is that he's incredible at making music. He's an awesome producer. But then I got in the room with him, and all of the things that he was able to tell me, 
I, I was able to take that to the stage and translate, you know, directly to my performance. He's so good yep. at what he says and the way he helps singers. So, I mean, I think that's really special too and, and something that he should continue to use. Oh, my God. I just I just love that about what, what you're picking up on that, what he's sharing and stuff like that. We are such in a great generation of music. Orlando, you got to come back to this show anytime in the future. The door is always going to be open for you. Absolutely, man. This is great. I've, I've had a great... Uh, great time here with you and i'd love to be back anytime absolutely will you be brilliant today okay sir thank you you too era appreciate it you bet but what's that now he's yours until 40 oh good dude orlando it's been a long time how have you been (laughs) <laughs> it's been great man you have a double this hour a double next hour and a double in the last hour oh see it see there you go that's what i like about mike he always creates room for us to have conversations because i mean that's the one thing about music these days orlando is the fact that we get the songs but we don't get the stories and so to be at this level with you right now i can't imagine i mean i'll, I'll give you a good example I've, I've i've done these these interviews with nbc's the voice for seven years people that i talked with seven years ago are still the their interviews are still getting thousands of hits. I love that. You know, just the the magic of the the magic of media, man. That's awesome. How are you participating with that process, Orlando? You know, I'm just trying. I'm tr- I'm trying to talk to as many people as I can. I'm trying to really uh, get my voice out there and um, try to get people to hear my story as well. You know understand me better as a person not only what you see on stage and performance but actually the 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 person that i am and um the message that i have to uh, to give you you bring up a good point about that message on stage and stuff like that and and i i gotta tell you i've become such a huge fan of post malone because he brings a message you cannot judge a book by its cover with post malone Mm. he is an incredible artist and you're so right what he brings on stage, the brand that he brings, it's like, you know, he's got all these, he's got the face tats and, and he's, he's got, uh, he's all tatted up, but just the, the joy and the happiness that he brings to the stage, this like energy of, of just utter joy. And it, it's, it's, you can feel it through his songs and also through his performance. That's, I mean, I feel like that should be the goal of every artist. So many of these artists, such as Post Malone and stuff like that, say that that music and creativity come to them between 11 and 4 o'clock in the morning. Are you inside that that definition as well? Absolutely. I'm I'm a night owl, late night guy. Um, I'd rather work, yeah, t- midnight to 4 or 5 in the morning than... Uh, than early in the day for sure I feel like the creative juices get flowing yeah. after midnight yeah how, how do you deal with that because I mean I, I call it the beast and I've had to learn how to communicate with the beast because that beast wants to be up that that early in the morning yet I I, I got a real job to do in the daytime yeah you know it's 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 tough to manage sometimes it's tough to navigate uh, you want to stay up all night and and and, and be creative but then also want to get stuff done uh, during the day and be productive. So uh, I've, I've kind of found that a little bit of a happy medium. Now, how, how do you, how do you deal with the fact that, that what, what you can put inside, because first of all, I love going into a studio. I, I can live and breathe and eat and have my entire life inside the studio because there's just something about the vibration of a microphone in front or, and, or just the energy that's inside the room and you're going, okay, I'm going to use this to grow forward. Do you, are you, are you in the same boat? Yeah, no, I love I love being in the studio. I love the, like the creative process. I love uh, getting new music recorded. You know, it's just so exciting. It's honestly there's no there's huge excitement in in seeing a, a you know a, a a passion project. You know, something you poured yourself into, like a song, come to life, and uh, knowing that you're going to be able to share that with so many more people. It's special. What What is your bad moment in the studio? And I'll explain what what I mean. Is that I went into the studio because you know we're, it's always about it's always about paying for that studio time and stuff like that. But I went in there and people go, "Oh, you do car commercials, huh? Let me hear your radio voice." And I, so I was I was sitting there, you know, joking around, having a good time. I couldn't do I couldn't sing that day because I was doing the car commercial voice and I blew out a vocal cord. Have you had anything like that? Oh yeah. Oh God, I definitely no. have. We've gone into <laughs> the last. So not this recording session, but the last recording session with my band, there was uh, one day I just woke up. I just woke up and, you know, it might have been an accumulation of doing gigs and singing in the studio, but I just was so hoarse. I couldn't sing. Yep. And, you know, 
you got to work, you got to work around it. You know, we, we punched it in here and there, but, um, had to, had to find other things that we can do for that day. Yeah, because I mean, I've I've done songs where I was singing like with with, with a higher falsetto type voice, but but in the studio that day, my engineer looked at me and said, "No, take it lower, take it to a different range." And and yeah. it was like, I mean, I love that he did that because the song sounds so much better. But it's like, why did I have to go through such a bad moment in order to get where we ended up? Yeah, and it's you know you were able to adjust, and that's what just what you have to do because I mean sometimes the cards. Uh, it's it's not ideal, but the cards you're dealt, but you got to make it work, you know, in that studio time. Singing Elton John's Rocket Man. You know, there's a lot of people that are out there viewing going, how dare you? But yet you did very well with that song. Thank you so much, Arrow. You know, we, we took a different approach to it. Um, that was kind of a different version um, that we were working with and kind of like a countryfied, slow, slowed down version mm-hmm. of it. And some people loved it. I've seen some people hate it. You know, I've seen comments of people hating it. Some people loving it. So, I think, I think overall, though, the the feedback has been really, really positive. And a lot of people have said how they enjoyed um, the rendition. They enjoyed what Ava and I did with it, the spin uh, that we took. So that's my goal. As long as most most people like it who, who are watching. Mm-hmm. Now, now one, one of the things, I, uh, first of all, I, lo- I love it when, when viewers or listeners, you know, come up and they criticize you and stuff like that. Because, you know, it's one of those things where you're going, well, at least they're talking about me. If, if they stop talking about me, yeah. then, then I've, got, well, I've got to create something. You talk about me all you want. Just spell my name right. That's true. <laughs> That's true. You know, you got to take the good and the bad. I'm here for it. <laughs> all right, man. You and I are both long hairs. How important is that long hair to you? Oh man, my main main. <laughs> no man, it's important. I've had I've had long hair now for uh, since probably sophomore year of college. Yep. I used to have it real long. I mean, like middle of my back, uh, kind of long. And then uh, a couple years ago, I cut it a little shorter. But man, I I love my long hair, and I'm not gonna not gonna get rid of it anytime soon. Dude, when when I had it in the middle of my back the first time, I, I was I was in Taekwondo and I would I would go to all these fighting tournaments and stuff like that. But all these little people that would take me on would figure out a way to reach behind me and pull it, and so this way they could get a. a and it was like you know this has got to stop right now. <laughs> that's gotta be that's gotta be cheating. That's cheating. Well, they, they they lose a point. They lose a point to gain two points yeah. because if you, if you get the right hit in in Taekwondo, it's it's all about gaining points. I'll I'll lose a point to get that. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> So what what is your goal? What what is what is your vision? Because you know, and I know, I know that we can't write our our stories, but we can experience the journey. Mm-hmm. And that's you know that's a, a big thing I'm trying to do is enjoy the journey. You know, my aspirations are obviously to have a, a wider, um, uh, you know, just a wider bandwidth, touch more, you know, be able to touch more people's lives, connect with more people, have my music be heard by you know, hundreds of thousands and millions of people, you know, be able to connect in that way and tell um, the stories that I, that I want to tell the message that I want to deliver of, of, um, of human connection, you know, and human shared human yep. experience. Yep. That's really what I'm here for, man. And so I'm trying to enjoy the journey. Every single part of that. I pray that one day I'll have a wider uh, bandwidth and, and, uh, you know, broader scope of, people that I'm touching than, than I am today but even today I'm trying to enjoy where I'm at and uh, the people I have in my life and the people I'm, I'm able to touch well I hope that you enjoy talking with all the radio people around the nation because I love your story and you know what a, a lot of us in this industry are going to be looking at you going I'm going to be talking to you about 25,000 more times in the future <laughs> I hope so man this, <laughs> I really enjoy this I enjoy sitting down and I enjoy talking to uh, some incredible personalities, man. So I appreciate you having me. All right, man. Will you be brilliant and you come back to this show anytime? All right, Orlando. Me too, Arrow. Appreciate you, man.